There's a Sunday school class of first and second graders, and they were asked to draw a picture of God. Well, when the pastor was walking around the church and he came to the children's department, he inspected their work. The children were happy to show their pastor their drawings of, of what to them was God. And uh, one of the children had depicted God in the form of a, a beautiful rainbow. Another had drawn the face of a kind of an older gentleman coming out of the clouds. Another boy uh, kind of... Uh, drew a guy that looked like Superman. But perhaps the best one that the pastor saw was a little girl. And she looked up at, at the pastor and she held this piece of paper and she said, Pastor, I didn't know what God looked like, so I just drew a picture of my daddy. Now, we don't know what God looks like Matter of fact, God is a spirit. The Bible is clear. He does not have a body like man. But we do know what he is like. We know what he is like through his word. And since it is Father's Day, I wanted to focus on the role of the father. But instead of focusing on the role of, of dads as earthly, as earthly dads, I want to speak from these two passages, one in Psalms and one in Proverbs uh, about God as our Father. Uh, I suppose that we could take a whole series if we took all the passages in the Bible that spoke of God as Father. And we could fill a whole uh, a year of sermons maybe on that. But I want to focus on these two passages that point to the Father's compassion, correction, and commitment. And hopefully this will help us to better understand God's fatherly love. So if you would turn with me to Psalm, the Psalm 103, Psalm 103. Psalm 103 verse 13. This is what it says here. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. So we're called here in this passage to consider and experience the Father's compassion. So we're called to think first about a human father's compassion for his own children. Now moms are often pegged as the compassionate and nurturing ones, and, and rightly so. Yet dads are not all whiskers and toughness. Right, guys? They're like, what are you talking about? A good father is compassionate towards his sons and his daughters. And, of course, we're called to relate this compassion of our earthly fathers to God as the father of his children. The promise here, of course, is not simply to all people in all places at all times. There's a, there's a qualifier here. It, it, it says, the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. So this is God's children by faith. The promise is for those who fear and love and worship God with reverent respect and total devotion. So these are God's children by faith that are spoken of the ones that God has compassion for. The point here is simple. If sinful men who are fathers, of whom I am one, by the way, can show compassion for their children, how much more Will our Heavenly Father show compassion to His sons and daughters by faith? The fathers have a great potential for compassion. We've watched our children at birth. We've watched our children grow up. We understand their needs, their hurts, their wants. 
And I think of how much I care about my own children. And yet God has greater compassion for his children than I could ever have for my own. The, the passage says God knows our frame. This is pointing back to creation. Did you notice uh, the word dust? Do you remember back in the creation story when God formed man out of the dust of the ground? Yeah, it points back to the fact that God remembers where we came from because he's the one who made us. He has compassion for his children because he knows us, he knows us inside and out. He knows our struggles. He knows our successes. He knows our joys. He knows our pains. Have you experienced the compassion of your earthly father? For some, they have had difficult relationship with their earthly father. For others, that relationship has been blessed and wonderful. But even the best earthly father will sometimes fail to show compassion to their child. But whether you have known the compassion of your earthly father or not, if you are a child of God, then you have the privilege of experiencing the compassion of God the Father. And here's the deal. If you're here today and, and, and maybe you say, well, I thought we was all God's children. Well, we are in a sense, right? We come from God. But this passage is very clear. That the children here that are talking of are those who are those who are trusting in God. And the Bible's clear that we come to know this God, the way we experience this God as Father, is actually through His Son. So our team that's in Brazil right now, even as we speak, uh, they're going around and telling people the gospel message. That this Creator God... That he made us. But that even though he made us in a, a, a state of, of, of freedom where we could choose right and wrong, Adam and Eve unfortunately chose wrong. And because of that, their sinful nature fell upon us. But it's not just as though we're guilty because our parents were guilty. As soon as... As we uh, have opportunity, we begin to act on that nature, act on that sinful nature. As many of you all know, I have, I have seven children, five boys and two girls. And I've said it, I'm pretty sure, often from this place. I have never had to teach one of my children to do the wrong thing. I've never had to teach them how to lie, cheat, and steal. I've never had, had to teach them how to be jealous or to compete with their siblings or to throw things at one another. I never had to teach them any of those things. Never had to teach them how to talk back. Didn't have to teach any of that. That's because they, they just like me, are sinners. So our team in Brazil is telling these Brazilian people and the Ohio team did the same thing, that we're sinners, we're separated from God, our creator, but that he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross so that instead of us paying the penalty for our sins, and the Bible says that penalty is awful. It's awful. It's punishment. It's separation from God. It's in a place called hell, a lake of fire. It's not some picnic or party. It's, you take the worst thing you could imagine and multiply it times a million to by 10 million by 10 billion by 10 billion. But the Bible says that this Jesus came and he... He bridged the gap. One of the gospel presentations that, that we use and that team will use is, is called the drawing. 
And it shows how that our sin puts a wall between us and God, but that because of the cross, because of Jesus, he made a way for us to be near to God again. And to know him as Father. A compassionate, loving, forgiving Father. Maybe you're here today and you say, well, I don't, I don't know if I've experienced that God. Well, I'm here to tell you today that you can know that God. You can experience that God. This compassion that says right here as the Father shows compassion to his children. The Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. If you will trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will know what it means to have the compassion of your creator and father God. And I would just urge you today not to leave this service, this, this moment without giving your life and heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Know God the Father by embracing the Son. Now, I want to go to a second passage. Next book over in your Bible, if you have your Bible open. We'll come back to Psalms, but we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 3 where we find another analogy or picture of fathers related to God and earthly fathers, okay? So we need to experience, or we're called to experience, the compassion of God the Father. But here we find in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 11 and 12 something else to consider says here, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline. By the way, if you've read through Proverbs, you know that particularly the first nine chapters are basically a dialogue between a father and his son. This is the instruction of the father to the son. It says, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof, for the Lord reproves him who he loves as a father the Son in whom he delights. Not only do we need to experience the compassion of God the Father uh, as we understand God's fatherly love, but we need to understand the Father's correction. We need to understand the Father's correction. Almost all of us, or maybe all of us, have experienced the correction of our earthly Father. Perhaps today, uh, over lunch with family, you may talk about some of these times. You remember when dad did this? You remember when dad, remember when so-and-so got in trouble? Or remember when, you know, talk stories about siblings getting in trouble or whatever. But I'm sure that you experienced the correction of an earthly father. Perhaps it was a, a stern look. Did your dad have a look? Did your dad ever give you a look? Did he have a look? I know mama's got a look. Did dad have a look? You get the stern look from dad? Maybe a firm spanking? Or back in the day, it was a switch, right? Maybe a striking word of correction? Stop. Now. Your dad could speak a word and everything stopped. Maybe that's what it was. But we've experienced that. Why do our earthly fathers discipline us? Is it because they hate us? They just like to yell. They like to spank. They just like to be mean. No, of course not. Our earthly fathers correct us because they love us. And, and, and they want what is best for us. Now, I know, I know earthly discipline can go bad. I know earthly fathers can fail in this. For those who are watching that video, they'll go, what was he just doing right there? Um, earthly fathers can fail in how they discipline. Uh, but we know that generally speaking, our fathers, our earthly fathers, have the intention not to hate us when they discipline us, but to love us. And again, we're here, we, we're to relate our earthly father's correction. Just as we were to think about our earthly father's compassion we are to relate our earthly father's correction uh, to, to God, to the discipline of God. And it is a sign that we are sons and daughters 
when we experience the discipline of God. The children of God are those who experience the, this discipline and one further thing I would add, they grow to understand its purpose. In the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, we have a parallel passage. It actually quotes this passage in Proverbs, and it kind of expands on it a little bit. But what it says in that passage, in Hebrews 12, 5 through 11, uh, we're told there that if we do not experience uh, the discipline of God, then we are not His children. Typically, we discipline our own children, not somebody else's kid down the street, right? It's our own children. God disciplines His children in this fatherly way. We're also told that this correction from God is not pleasurable always, but it's painful and difficult often. But it is totally out of love that God disciplines us as a father. So again, similar to compassion, we might say it this way. If our earthly fathers who are sinful discipline us imperfectly out of love, then how much more will our heavenly Father discipline us perfectly out of his perfect love for us? You see, when we understand the correction of our Heavenly Father, I believe it changes everything. It, it, it's been a part of the experience of my journey in the Lord. There was a time in my life, I was, I was converted at a younger age, and there was a part of my life where I drifted away from the Lord. And so I experienced the discipline of God where God put things in my path and he said, no, stop. He gave me a version of what I would call a spiritual spanking. Anybody ever had that happen to them? I see a few people know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the Lord used some pretty rough things in my life to bring me back online. But I'm so grateful to God that he did. Because if he didn't, what would that have said about where I stood with God? We need to have a biblical understanding of God's activity in our lives. Uh, when difficult things come our way, we tend to think uh, they're either not from God at all, or somehow we just blame God as if he's trying to destroy us. But there's a third more biblical option, and that is this. God is in control of all things, because he is, okay? And anything that he brings into our lives is to help us get to heaven. Without his discipline, we would simply fall away and go our own way. We sang that song, You Never Let Go. One of the ways he never lets go is he disciplines his kids that he loves. I wonder today if you've come to this understanding of God's correction in your life. It's a very important question because we see from the Bible if there is no fatherly correction, then there is no family connection. Do you understand that? We see from the Bible that if there is no fatherly correction, then there is no family connection. As Christians, we sometimes wonder why we're going through things we're going through. We may be tempted to think that God is unaware of our problems or he's trying to ruin us, but he's not. God disciplines the sons and daughters he loves. And it doesn't seem pleasant. Think back, for some of us it's a while. Think back to a time when your earthly father, when you were in trouble. And think about whether that was a joyful experience when your dad was cross with you. It was not. I remember a few of those times. 
It was not very pleasant at all. But you know what we come to understand? That our dads, we look back and we go, that man knew a whole lot more than I did. And he was trying to help me know what was going on. He was trying to help me go the right way. And we understand that the discipline we received was for our good and was never meant to destroy us, but to actually keep us from harm. So I urge you today from the scriptures, don't despise the correction of God. Don't grow weary of the discipline of God. It's a struggle for all of us. We, we, we go through our days, right? And we're trying to live for Jesus and something comes into our life. We go, God, why do I got to go through this? And why do I got to go through it right now? Of all times. Folks, it happens to me. Hey, just because you're a pastor doesn't mean you're on some spiritual mountaintop all the time. Life is tough. We have struggles. God brings things into our life. He's shaping us into what he wants us to be. He brings discipline. He brings correction. But it's not because he's trying to ruin us. He's loving us towards heaven. You get that? He's loving us towards heaven. The verse says that it is the son in whom the father delights that he reproves. It is totally out of love that God gets intimately con connected and involved in your life and corrects you and me for our good and for his glory. Well, I want us to go back, back to Psalms to finish up this message. I want us to go back to Psalms. Same passage in Psalms, Psalms 103. Come full circle back to that passage for this last part of this message on God's fatherly love. God's fatherly love is shown in his compassion and in his correction, but we also must know the Father's commitment. Father's commitment. When we think of love, uh, we often think of various kinds of love. Like we think of uh, ro romantic love, right? Uh, we might think of brotherly love. Uh, love of God, love of neighbor. Uh, most of all, though, when we think of love, we must understand that behind the biblical concept of love is commitment. Commitment. Look at Psalm 103, verse 15. It says... As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over and is gone. Its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. So we're reminded here of the temporary and changing nature of life for us. Life is short. The Bible says life is but a vapor. It's short. But God is not like us. Amen? He's not like us. God doesn't come and go. God never dies. God does not have a beginning or an end. He, God is the eternal and we see that God's commitment of love to his children is also eternal. It's not subject to change. Notice the word uh, in the Old Testament here is hesed in the Hebrew. And it's not simply translated love. It, look what it's translated. Steadfast love. The kind of love that God has for his children is a love that is fully and eternally committed. It is a, a covenant love, a love with a promise. And guess what? God always 
keeps his promise. Have you ever noticed that on Father's Day, it's rarely feelings of love that we speak of in honoring our fathers? I don't know if it's because us guys are less feely. I don't, I don't know if that's, is that a word, feely? I don't know. Uh, but we often are reminded on Father's Day of how our fathers worked hard to provide for us. How they stood by us when times were tough. And how they were faithful to show us an example to follow. Guess what that's called? Commitment. It's called commitment. Now we call it love, but it's commitment. It's total commitment. We honor our dads because of the kind of love they showed us. A commitment to our well-being, a commitment to our family, a commitment to our future. And we must always remember that Father God is totally committed to his kids. He, he doesn't just love us for a while. He didn't just love us for a while. He loves us eternally. And he will never stop loving those who have been adopted into his family by faith. So today, know the Father's commitment. His steadfast love, it says, is from everlasting to everlasting. There is no end to God's loving care. No end. The Bible says he will never leave or forsake you. That is his promise to you, child of God. It, it, it is sad. I read just an article the other day about a father like what I'm going to describe here. But it is sad when we hear the news, on the news, about a father that neglects his children or even brings harm to his own children. It probably makes us a bit angry. I know it makes me angry to hear these things to think about children who suffer. But when we see a good father, one who's compassionate toward his kids, one who lovingly disciplines his kids, one who is totally committed to his kids, we see a small picture of God, the Father. When we see that that look of fatherly joy and love in the face of an earthly dad, we should be reminded of the great joy and love that is found in the face of our heavenly father as he parents us for our good and for his glory. And we should take great joy that our heavenly father takes great joy in us. God's fatherly love is clearly revealed to us as we experience his compassion. And God's fatherly love uh, is revealed to us as we grow to understand the correction that he brings into our life. And God's fatherly love is revealed to us as we know his commitment to his children. And this is God's fatherly love. Would you pray with me?